and welcome back today. High is 75 degrees. What a beautiful day we've had. Normally for this time of year, we're looking at highs only in the upper 50s. Record for this time of year, we only almost reached at 76 degrees, was set back in 1989. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the Let's go ahead and take a look at the current radar. Low pressure system over the Dakotas with an associated cold front over the central portion of the United States is actually going to sweep into our area tonight into tomorrow, sparking off some showers and some thunderstorms. That's actually prompted the Storms Prediction Center in Norman, Oklahoma to issue a slight risk for us for severe weather, and that's mainly for the high winds associated with these thunderstorms that are going to come in tonight into tomorrow. But tonight into Wednesday, we're gonna see that cold front actually sweep off to the east. Now again, tonight, most of us are, are going to see that action in the form of showers and thunderstorms. A few of us may see that severe weather, low of 60 degrees, south winds, at about 10 to 20, but gusting to 30, that's nothing in comparison to what we're going to see tomorrow. Showers and thunderstorms probably leaving the area around 1 or 2 o'clock in the afternoon. High 65 degrees, we may even see some peaks of sun, but folks, take a look at those winds. Southwest winds at 35 to 40 miles per hour, gust of 55 miles per hour. We haven't seen that in this kind of system in quite some time. As we take a look at tomorrow night, that'll actually last into Wednesday and is prompted the National Weather Service to issue a high wind warning for gusts in excess of 55 miles per hour. But it's not all bad news, folks. As we go ahead and take a look at the five-day forecast, once those showers, thunderstorms, and windy conditions pull through on Tuesday and Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, even though the temperatures will pull back a little bit on Thursday into the upper 40s, by Saturday we will see the temperatures rebound into the upper 50s. That's all for weather. Back to the desk. This weekend was football, 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 and football. It's time for NTC Sports, and Joe Olmall joins us now to fill us in on the local sports action. Yeah, well, guys, it, we had our American football, and well, then we had that other football. It was a pretty exciting weekend for sports, so let's just jump right into the highlights. And IU football is on the last of their homestands, three-game homestand. This, they've successfully defended their home turf the first three contests, but the team was humbled by its history versus Central Michigan. Lowe's Senior Class Award nominee Jake Kaufman leads the troops to battle. Chippewas receiver Keto Pobla carries NIU cornerback Tommy Davis for a piggyback ride, but Patrick George shuts down the ride. This time Davis gets the better of CMU when he recovers the fumble caused by Alex Kuba. Michael Klamowski here attempts a 51-yarder with the wind at his back, but he's wide right. Chandler Harnish now here on the goal line working the corner route, but overthrows Nathan Palmer, and the Huskies would have to settle for a Klamowski field goal. Now the Chippewas are on the red zone, and Ryan Radcliffe finds Pobla, who finds a way back into your picture for the glory. Central mar marching at the end of the half, and Clark Kent, I'm sorry, I mean Tyrone Clark, saves the 9-7 lead. To the second half, where the Huskies discovered their mojo, and NIU's Cameron Bell finds a crack and bursts for a big game. Bell rushed for a total of 85 yards all in the second half. Chandler Harnish here. Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. It's Chad Spann running, it, running it to the right for land of six. ROTC shows off their muscles to celebrate the score. The D gets back into the turnover sweepstakes after Kiari Daniels tips the pass and Chris Smith is Johnny on the spot. C Spann here puts the finishing touch down on the Huskies', Huskies fifth straight victory. We turn to the high school now. And the Barbs roll west on Route 38 to take on Rochelle. And Dalton Wadi couldn't wait to punch it in for six. The extra point was blocked. Rochelle's quarterback Nick Moore would not waste any time. And Moore strikes back with a connection to CJ Navarro for six of his own. But remember, no celebrating kids. This is high school. Rochelle takes the 7-6 early lead. Junior Brian Sisler takes the quarterback keeper. And unfortunately, the sideline is the 12th man on the field. Sisler wouldn't be denied though, and two plays later, Sisler sizzles his way into the hot zone. Devontae Ragsdale turns the corner here and runs another one in for six. 
But then Rochelle tries a fake punt and a la Michigan State, but Troy Talaga sniffs out the Spartan mockery. Talaga plays the guessing game and six, well, was the correct answer. The Barbs trying to add to their 21 point lead, but at the end of the half, Logan Sutton traps Sisler for another sack. In the third though, Sisler pitches to Wadi, who patiently will set up his blocks here and stretches it into the hot zone again for the victory. With that victory, the Barbs secure their place in the playoffs for the first time since 1989. After the game, the Barbs were looking ahead to this weekend. Our coaches are going to start working hard as, as early as now on the bus trip home. We're going to start looking at some scores and kind of looking at who we might line up with. And uh, this is a fun time of year to kind of play uh, a little bit of a pro prognosticator to see who we might match up with down the stretch. DeKalb will take a trip west to Rock Island to line up with the second-ranked Rocks. Sycamore kicks off their regular season finale against Yorkville, and on senior night, senior Eric Ray steps in front of the Yorkville receiver and takes it to the house. Tommy Nice does a nice job here of clearing the hole and escapes to add on six more. The Spartans' D adds to the pummeling, and Ryan Hafner tips the pass, and senior Daryl Mayweathers is the king of cheers as Mayweathers was also homecoming king a few weeks ago. Sycamore caps off an 8-1 season and hosts 6-3 Lake Villa on Friday. Let's go to the pro game now. And at Soldier Field, there was a battle of who can throw the most interceptions for touchdowns. DJ Moore puts Donovan McNabb on the tote board when he accepts the gift and puts six points up on the board for the Bears. D'Angelo Hall evens the slate when he picks Jay Cutler for the third time. Hall would tie the NFL record for most interceptions in a single game with his fourth theft in the fourth quarter. The Bears are forced to watch and wait for Sunday Night Football where the Packers and Bear Vikings do battle to draw closer to the first place Bears. Brett Favre returns to his old stomping ground, but it's the Cheeseheads doing the stomping. Favre pump fakes the cameraman, but does not fake out Desmond Bishop. Bishop, Bishop takes Favre's money to collect six. After a Randy Moss touchdown, the Vikings are on their last leg, and Percy Harvin is at the back of the end zone, and it appears number four has pulled off another miracle. But a closer look reveals Harvin only has one foot in bounds. Favre has one last gasp, falls down, gets up, and scrambles, but overthrows Randy Moss. The Vikings are a game and a half behind the Packers and Bears. And in sports notes, coming back to the local area, according to sources inside NIU's athletic department, linebacker Tyrone Clark will be named Mac West Defensive Player of the Week. That means a Husky has been Player of the Week for six straight weeks. And I use women's soccer improved their record to 9, 7, and 1 with a pair of wins over the weekend. Friday, they beat Miami of Ohio 2 to 1. And Bowling Green fell to the NIU Huskies 1 0 Sunday. Their next game is Western Michigan on Thursday. For the first time since 2001, NIU women's volleyball pounds the Bobcats of Ohio. The Huskies improved their record to 23 and 2. They'll be in action again Friday and Saturday at Toledo and at Ball State. But enough of me talking, let's get back to the action for your play of the day. For that, we head down to the Big Easy. Drew Brees and his wife welcomed their son, second son, Bowen, on Tuesday. And how did Drew celebrate? Well, he threw two of his four picks to the guy named David Bowens. Let's take another look. Bowens returned both INTs for TDs. Brees goes around to avoid the tackle, and Bowens, Bowens gives us the, his best Michael Jordan impression. The Browns stunned the Saints. And again, that's your play of the day. And one final note, both the boys and girls cross-country teams are in the sectional finals. So it's pretty exciting times at DHS here, guys. Well, that's great. DeKalb High School just rocks at sports right now. Thanks, Joe. Not a problem. Well, for those of you who have dealt with unwanted pool guests, you will appreciate this. We'll explain. <laughs> Imagine looking out into your backyard and seeing this, a buffalo. It wound up in a family's swimming pool in North Georgia on Sunday. The county sheriff's office says the buffalo had to be lassoed to get it out. The creature apparently belonged to a neighbor. The animal had escaped a couple of weeks ago. Well, as you can see, it showed up again. 
Well, I guess North, jo North Georgia is where the buffalo roam. I guess so. But before we go, let's get one more word with weather. Well, uh, what will we see tomorrow, Mike? Well, you know, there's really two big stories uh, coming up in the next 48 hours. One's going to be the severe potential tonight for some thunderstorms. And then after that's going to be the high winds, and that prompted the National Weather Service warning for Tuesday and for Wednesday. But as I mentioned in the five-day forecast, by the end of the week, things should improve. Well, thanks, Mike. Thanks for uh, watching, everyone. Join us tomorrow. We'll be back again at the same time. Good night, everyone.